What's going on guys, Spike here today, and today we're going to be reacting to something a little different. This is something that, uh, it, this is going to be less of a reaction, it's going to be like, it is still going to be a reaction, because I've never heard this story before, but it's also going to be like an analysis and kind of review as well, because this is someone who is new to uh, like creepypasta reading and all that stuff. Uh, his name is like Lord Ben Maza, I think that's how you pronounce. Sorry if I butchered your name. Um, but this is um, what's the name of this thing? Working at Disneyland, I think is what the name of the thing is called. It's a creepy pasta where basically, um, it's like a what if story of like Disney because we know there's like dark lore behind Disney. This was written like way back. I I don't know when, but. This is basically just like an analysis video to kind of help somebody out. So I know this video is not going to do well, but it it's just a way to kind of help somebody out. Because, yeah, uh, I'm more than willing to give it a watch and to, you know, help him, you know, improve as a narrator or whatever. Depending on, like, he asked me for, like, what music to use. My personal favorite uh, is Mew. Is that his name? Uh, he's the one who does all the dark piano stuff, Lost uses it, Scribbler uses his music, um, he's the original conductor for, um, Reversion, which is Lost in Mag's song, uh, so, I'm guessing he's probably used some music tracks, but the main thing that I'm gonna probably be focusing on is if he used sound effects, uh, those, that, and the pace of the narration, of course. Mine has really gotten a lot more better over since, you know, Scribbler gave me some, you know, harsh, uh, truths, so. Anyways, I don't really know what to expect. I'm guessing just a dark lore story behind Disney, like a what-if story with Disney. So without further ado, let's just get into this, uh, three, two, one, go. Ah, the magical world of Disney. Welcome to the magical world of Disney. So much goes on off stage and behind the scenes to ensure that the guests have the most magical time in their lives once they arrive on there we the property. Go. Ever seen a web page sign while walking through the parks? How about a maintenance cast member with a bag of tools? Anyone with a construction hard hat? Of course you haven't. Okay, I definitely now recognize the, the music track. World is Don't we call the name right now. Because at 99.9% .9 of all the world But it's like on, creepy music. <laughs> Okay, so you ended up as someone that is outside of the cast characters. That's what you're basically called at Disneyland. That's true. That's actually a true fact. Like, if you work in, like, you know, in, like, a costume and all that stuff, then you're called a cast member. Nice. I got to know many of the night security staff 
by face at least, at all four parks as well as the resorts. If you don't know, Walt Disney World opened in 1971. That was exactly not too uncommon to come across someone who has been a lifer with Disney or knew someone who ha was. 40 plus years working for the mouse. God bless him. <laughs> Even Mike Foreman, who although did not work directly for Walt Disney World Resort, was one of these. Boy, did they have some stories to tell the past time. As I adjusted more to the job, I began to get more comfortable with the surroundings. The cast members grew more social towards me, and I was able to make my way through the parks without getting lost, too. Let me tell you, that is not an easy feat when you're first start out working there, especially I bet. Night. Any starting day on the job sucks. Track, there is very minimal lighting, except for where we put our... <clears throat> like, you don't really know what to expect. So therefore, you bit off more than you can chew, and you just find that out right later on. To light their ways, and the store lights are only on if someone is working in them. Quite eerie and yet cool at the same time. It is like a totally different place than during operating hours. As a matter of fact, one time when I decided to visit the park as a guest, I couldn't find a ride that I wanted to go on because it looked so different during the day with all the colors, people, sounds, and Things music. do look different at night. One Very. Year working at the place full time, and I like at night, things change. I don't care what anybody like, says, but it changes. <laughs> Pathetic. Anyways, as I started conversing more and more with the cast members, some of the security staff and I found out that we had a mutual interest in the paranormal, of course, that would come up in conversations eventually when working graveyard shifts. <laughs> I would get to hear stories from them all, all the time. The famous ghosts of the, in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, uh, the murder slash suicide in one of the rooms of the certain Some of the court, things being haunted, yeah. I wouldn't doubt that that's a real thing, honestly, because you never know. Disney likes to hide some dark shit, so... Could be real. Like I said, creepypastas are meant to be realistic. Like, they're not... It's hard to really determine what a creepypasta is. Like, those stories that you hear around the campfire when you're camping. Like, those scary stories. Classic scary stories. But they're written very well. Like, they seem real, but they're not real. Okay. Of course, the noises and voices when they were working all alone. Ghost hunters. Jackpot. So several months ago, when arriving at work, the foreman called our team over for a meeting. He announced that he, we would be starting a new segment in the Magic Kingdom shortly. We would be working on the Seven Dwarfs Mine train ride. This attraction would be opening later in the year. How exciting. Up until now, my crew, since I started with them, had been doing mundane yet necessary assessments. We had the pleasure of pouring concrete, digging ditches, fixing bathrooms, good stuff. Well, you're trying to hide now, something, apparently, I'm then. Now, actually going to get to work on an attraction. Imagine me getting to tell my future wife and children that I helped make this as we were riding it. They would be in awe and so proud. The building was already up for the most part, and we were going to be working and making it show what ready. Is you know, making a track. I, I've like used a it before. Out, rocks, see the thumbnail plain as day. The works. When the time came to start uh, this, he had us to meet one of the cast member break rooms inside the attraction. I can't remember. For those who don't know, most of all attractions have break rooms inside of them that the public can't see. A cast member working the ride literally doesn't have to leave it if he or she doesn't God. want to, even for a launch break. I can't, I can't remember it at the moment. He explained the job, who would be doing what each week, and all the normal details. He proceeded to tell us that as a per Disney management, we will all take our lunch breaks at 3 o'clock a.m. and only take it in this particular break room we were in. 3 a.m.? 
wait, what? I thought this was kind of weird, since my employment with them began, we were never told when and where to take lunch. 3 a.m. Whoa. Stagger our breaks That's early. Well, so most of the crew was always I honestly don't know. Well, Disney, guess, Disneyland's probably open like from a certain time to a certain time. Last time I went to Disneyland was like when I was young, and I can't even remember. But I will it. say this: I saw what I was thinking in the eyes of my coworkers as well. We were only a group of ten guys on this assignment, and we have broken up into groups of five. One group will work on the outside, and one group on the inside of the attraction. I was in the inside group. It was a pain Yikes. to work in that thing. Due to the size of spaces we had to work, maybe one or two floodlights would fit in in that area where we were working. It gave an effect of starting into a fire in the woods. While working on the wall, it was bright as hell. When you came out of that space, you were as blind as a bat. The first few days, it became a running joke slash contest of who would trip on something or broke their ass. Kind of sounds like a Five Nights at Freddy's thing going on. Had to pay for the drinks when we went out Five Nights at Freddy's 3. I paid up twice the first month. Thanks, I know there's Disney. plenty of, like, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's I guess you uh, games that are based around this but kind I of idea. I can't remember the name of the, the game automa room. automatically, like Five I'm Nights at... Uh, Treasure I'm Island or something like that? Once while at the Animal Kingdom, I was not going to have it happen again. So I just carried it with my other gear from that. then on. We were working on the opposite side of the attraction from the break room, and it was just about lunchtime. We cleaned up all the possible trip hazards and ran on break. Safety hazard. When we the break room, I realized I had left my bag when we were working. Damn it. There was no way I was spending $8 on a Coke and a stupid beer claw from one of the dizzy rip-off vending machines. Yeah. I told the guys that I was going to run back to get my bag, so off I went. I was hurrying along because we were only get half an hour of lunch, and if we take even a minute longer to get back to our work location, there is hell to pay. And you all know how fast a half hour flies, unless you're working. Trying to make good time, I must have made a wrong turn in all blackness. My stupid flashlight was in my tool bag. Of course, I was attempting oh, to boy. feel my way around the track when I saw some light coming up ahead off me. They looked like they could be a set of emergency lights, but they were quite dim and flickering. Who cares? Any port in a storm, right? I slowly made my way towards them and began to hear voices, but I couldn't make out any words. There was no one in the attraction other than us, or so we were told. <laughs> oh my god. After all the stories I was told, was I finally going to have one of my own? As much as it felt the hairs of my neck to stand up, I was excited as well. Even though I really like hearing about ghosts, I can't say that I'm really, truly afraid of them. I just don't want You're them in about my to be. Other than that, I find the idea of them fascinating. I like, it's kind of cliche a little bit. I wish to God was a ghost I saw. It was a large, at least compared to where we were working, open space. And there was a fabricated stone slab made to look like a natural lock formation in the center. Six figures in suits were around in a circle. Five oh God. candles, while one was reading off of what it looked like an old piece of parchment. What he Titanic was saying was beyond my knowledge, not English from what I could hear. Every time the main suit would finish a sentence or two, the others would repeat the last word. As I crouched there, amazed, I saw what looked like a flash of yellow and blue stirring from the top of the altar. Yellow and blue. There was blue. someone on it. A woman. She stirred again, and I thought my eyes were playing tricks Yep, satanic on rituals. Lovely. It looked like one of those college program kids mm -hmm. that said to go be friends with the characters, completely dressed as Snow White. Oh, She no. was gagged and bound. What the hell was I seeing? Her eyes were huge and filled with fright. I bet. Tears were streaming down her face, making her overly done makeup run. As much as she struggled, 
She could barely move. The man with the parchment stopped reading. The others all proceeded. Some crudely made daggers made their way to her. Stab? Two of them went to each of her arms. Oh. Two to her legs and one stood on top of her head. Oh. The leader, for lack of a better word, made a gesture with his hands and said one more comprehensible word and all the others moved in. The two by her arms sliced her arms from the mid bicep down to the wrist. The others did the same from the mid thigh to the top so of her feet. Be... The fifth who won actually right carved from what looked like a half moon into her forehead. They're killing her basically. I stifled a scream. And closed my eyes. I could hear muffled screams and smell of copper in my nostrils. Uh huh. And the taste in the back of my throat. I opened my eyes briefly to see the leader proceed a knife, walk over to the altar, and lift poor Snow White's chin up toward him. That's when I turned and ran. I got back to the break room. Okay, that's bad encounter. I remember the name of this I one for sure. Like a crazed because one of my buddies said. What the hell happened to you? And where's your lunch bag? I didn't even answer him. I just stood there. He looked at me over one time and decided to call the foreman over on radio to come talk to me. Yeah. The foreman came in, took one look at me and asked if I was feeling okay. So, the question is, head. is it ghosts? He told me to or go home for the is it like, you know, a bunch shift. of employees, like cast today, members, days, doing some dark stuff home. behind the scenes? I attempted to rationalize of what happened. It had to be a gag, right? Was it my boys with an elaborate broke up to the crew trick? I mean, God. Jesus. Those are full of college program kids. Late teens and early 20-year-olds away from home and college getting paid crap just so they could put Disney in their resumes. Just fornicating and causing havoc every chance they get? Playing tricks so they can get put it on their blogs or Twitter or whatever else stupid things they use to get attention? Had to be. On my first night back to work, I literally had to force myself not to turn my car around at the security gate. When the guard opened it for me to enter, when I got into the break room, one of the lifters I worked with was sitting there seemingly waiting for me. Told me to clock in, leave my stuff with him, and go meet with the foreman over by the main entrance. I looked at him quizzically, said it was pretty far from where the mine was, and it was heavily frowned upon for us non-cast members to be down wandering far from where we were assigned. I stated as such, and he just said, Go. You'll be with your boss, so we'll be in his ass, not yours if someone says something. I made my way over to the main entrance and find him under the train station, sitting on one of the benches. He told me to sit. He sat there for about five minutes without speaking. He lit up a cigarette, and I did as well. During the night shift, you could get away with this if you were careful about it. He asked me about what happened to yeah, me. I've heard things about night. that. I just shrugged. You're not allowed to smoke at all. The newly hose down ground and exhaled. Like while you're still in costume. Like you, if you work a full day, you ain't smoking for a full day. The other guys really like me. I'm against smoking, so. Didn't want to lose me. And that, he was just surprised I came back after the way I looked. I told him that was far from the truth. He asked me if I was just sick, or if something happened. Ah shit. He also asked me if maybe a cast member. Sorry, I projected this into the comments. Or the comments, the notifications. I shook my head and said that he wouldn't believe me. And would probably fire me for being a nut if I told him. He then said something that made me feel like it was okay to tell my story. He said, I have worked here since it was just flat land and dirt roads. Nothing you could say can shock me. Um... I looked up at him, dead in the eyes. When I saw that he was telling the truth, I began to explain everything from the beginning. I ended the story with the other guy he told me to come and see him. My foreman sat there, flicked his cigarette butt, and ground it into the floor. A huge Disney no-no. Mm -hmm. He had sat there nodding through the entire story, not interrupting me once. Never once smirked, 
a smile, a look of disbelief. A custodial truck happened to drop by when the headlights flashed on us. I had seen that all the blood had seemed to drain from my foreman's face. He breathed in and exhaled once from the mouth. So, what does that mean? He had the beginnings of tears in his eyes. He finally spoke. What I'm about to tell you, kiddo, not many people here have been long enough to know, and those who do know almost never speak about it. It's sort of a taboo subject, and the few that do talk about it are just too old to care, or have had one too many scotches. Mm -hmm. He smiled half-heartedly at this, and I thought maybe he might stop. But he continued. I have lived in this area for almost 80 years. I have barely been out of this state less time than I can count on one hand. Orlando has only looked this way for a short time. If you could have seen this land at the time I grew up here, you would be amazed. Marshland and orange groves, nothing else. Until Uncle Walt decided that this was the spot for his next incredible theme park. There was practically nothing. Humans have been inhabiting this land for a very long time. Ghosts. The Ace, the Demons. Amalasi, the to be exact. The Tokabako. All native Indians that lived in or around the area you are sitting on right now. The parallel Indians were here before them. Ancient lands. Well, I'm no historian, but I guess them Indians at some point figured out this land was a little spoiled. Spoiled as in not just bad, but spoiled as in how a little child throws a tantrum if it doesn't get its way. At some point, when these cultures were not having good weather or crops, what have you, they figured out that a blood sacrifice could do the trick. Every time they built a large structure in this area, they drew blood. But for whatever reason, the sacrifice had to do with the structure being built. For example, if the Indians were building a religious structure, a salmon had to be sacrificed. If a shelter was building a barn or an orange grove, a farmhand had to be the one. You get me? And it had to be done by the elders of the town. Couldn't be done by just anyone. But by the elders and most influential ones in the area. Uh, you ever seen that movie Pet Cemetery by Stephen King? It's like that, but the important people involved. Do you know that the story about Dizzy buying this land? He bought it not under the Dizzy brand, but hundreds of pseudo companies. He didn't want anyone to know what he was going to build a theme park here because the locals may not have sold it as cheaply as they did. So he did what he did. Wonder if all through this half truth bargaining, if him or his round table executives ever wondered why so many were willing to sell at that price. Would they done having to do with the despicable to make a profit here? Did many of them want out? It could really make you wonder. And how come supposedly nobody dies at Disney? How come all people were proclaimed dead off the property? And why do we have so many college kids that were supposedly running rampant here? Think about it. I just gotta tell you because I think you may have deserved it after you've seen what you claim to. The powers at me here are powerful. More powerful than just being executives. They pretty much rule everything. You think Club 33 is exclusive? <laughs> the club you stumbled upon rules more than just a theme park. If you talk about what you've seen, your life may be in danger. Well, his life's in danger. I just sat there, trying to soak in for what I just heard. This was insane! And then my foreman said one more thing before the last sentence I ever said to that nice man. If you think that was bad... <sighs> just imagine what I heard when we were building It's a Small World. I swear I still hear those screams of those poor kids once I close my eyes at night. 40 years after. My reply? I quit. Ah, uh, the magical world of Dizzy. I still get the shakes when I think about it. I hate every fucking Dizzy commercial that comes out on TV. And they 
come on alive. I get goosebumps every time. I see that you're I think that means you're being haunted, dude. And I need work. Should I apply? Well, I'll say one thing, that was actually really well done. Like, most beginners, like, most beginner stuff is really bad, but that was actually really good. Um, so basically the story is, yeah, um, moral of the story, don't build things over freaking, like, you know, Indian reservations. Otherwise, things are going to go bad. But... Yeah, I would heard about the story in the past, like, many, many times. It's like one of the most notorious creepypastas out there. Next to things like, you know, Jeff the Killer, Slender Man, you know, the usual ones that you're used to hearing. So, all in all, the story was good. It, it, you know, it was messed up, but yeah, it was, it seemed realistic. Like, it, like a creepypasta kind of is like this. It could happen, but it's not real. Or, do, or is it real? We have no idea. Because unless you work in that, you know, area like Disney, I don't know the full story behind it. And I guarantee there's a lot of dark stuff behind the scenes that we don't see. Not necessarily murder, but I'm guaranteeing there's probably some pretty messed up shit behind the scenes. But basically, applying to Disney means you're, like, selling your soul. It's not, you know, like making a deal with the devil or anything, but it's not a position that everybody can handle. <clears throat> like, I've heard some very messed up stories about Disney, like true stories. I don't know if anything like this has ever happened to Disneyland. I truly don't know because Disney's really good about covering up their tracks like that. But it's like I, it's like I said, creepypastas are meant to sound real, but they're not real. That's exactly what they're supposed to be, creepy. They're supposed to make you feel like, oh, oh, is this real or is this fake, you know? Like, things like Slender, it could be a real thing, you never know. I swear I spied Slender in the woods one time. But, onto the narration and all that stuff. Narration, very well done. Uh, especially in a first-person point of view, uh, excuse me, first-person point of view story. First person is all about being the character telling the story, which is, which you did a really good job at. Um, there is some points for improvement, like simple things like mic quality. Mic quality, um, I, you use Audacity to edit, but I don't think you know how to fully use Audacity. Altogether, really well done. Uh, the only thing I would recommend, really, as far as the music goes, just kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, you, you did mix it up, but you kind of repeated stuff over and over and over and over again which can get kind of boring. Like, that can really get boring after a while. Another thing that I recommend adding, and this is just a simple, uh, you know, little tip that makes a th that makes your reading even look better. Uh, you've got the audio fade out going. Now for the visuals, uh, fade out. Fade out and fade in. You want to fade in, like, black, fade in from black into the thing maybe add some text in it, like, who, who wrote it, you know, like what I do with mine. Uh, I basically put a text, one with, like, text and one with no text, and just kind of, like, make a transition, and that's what brings the text up. So, there is room for improvement, indeed. Uh, my quality and all that stuff, but everything else is really good. You can add in some effects in there that can help you, but, I don't know, it's up to you. It's all on who you are. But, I just have to say that that was really well done. I mean, most first reads are bad, <laughs> like really bad, but altogether, I thought that was actually really good. I mean, you voice acted really well as the character. There is some improvement there as well that you could could use, but altogether, this was actually not that bad. Like, not bad at all. Like, I'm honestly surprised. Like, my first read, oh God, what was it? I want to say it was... Oh god, I remember. It was, uh... Oh god, what was the Rainbow Dash one called? Rainbow Reunion. That was my actual first fanfic read, and oh my god, it's so bad. 
but altogether, that was good. Uh, I definitely would recommend you actually doing more because it is actually, uh, you do a good job at it. So I would uh, recommend you doing it more and just slowly working, you know, progressing into more advanced stuff and, you know, upgrade your system to a more, you know, something that can handle that kind of stuff. Some things are needed to improve, to need some improvement, but those will all come in time. So until next time, guys, that's all for now. Like, comment, subscribe for more. Hit the bell icon if you want more. I do readings and I do reactions. And if, you know, your content creator wanted me to look at your stuff, uh, send me a link to your video. I just know I tend to be brutally honest. So anyways, I think I'm done here. And yeah, guys, uh, take care until next time. And uh, happy horse until then. Take care.